Oh, let's paint some Source Warriors today. Oh, yeah. Hello and welcome to another fresh tip tutorial with me, your host, Chris. Today, we're working on the Source Warrior Alpha from the brand new Seraphon box set. Big thank you to Games Workshop for sending me a review copy of this model to play with. We're gonna get things started with some Volpuis Pink from Citadel Contrast. We're gonna use some Contrast Medium. We're gonna slap a little bit onto our palette, uh, about three drops of the Contrast Paint and about two or three drops of contrast medium. So roughly a one-to-one -one mix ratio. Probably could be a little bit more medium, but that's fine actually. Um, now this uh, model has been assembled, completely assembled and primed with Wraith Seer. Wraith Seer? I think it was Wraith Seer. The Citadel uh, spray paint, uh, not the white, you know, the bone color, right? And as you can see, we move our way around the model and of course, uh, as we are moving the, the brush around, for everybody out there who's not really used to playing with contrast paints, uh, when you're moving the model or uh, the brush around the surface, if you are fairly aggressive, you'll create little bubbles and such on the surface. Just be mindful of that. Uh, it is better to move the contrast paint and keep your brush on the surface of the model as opposed to just kind of like using like a sketch kind of motion where you kind of just short brush strokes back and forth actually it's better to kind of keep your brush in contact with that surface as you move the paint around of course the citadel contrast does uh flow more like an ink rather than a paint but again uh because we've added a lot of medium to this mixture well it's a 50 50 mix but it's quite a bit actually but anyway as you move it around you will need to draw some of the excess out as uh, you don't really want it to pool too heavily so anywhere in the armpits uh collar uh up on the hand down by the feet any areas like that where it's kind of just a little too heavy you got to pull that out we're going to come back to vulpless pink we're going to slap that onto the palette we're going to add a drop of contrast medium to this uh, i think we're only going to add one drop so this is roughly more two drops uh, this should be more medium than it is contrast paint and this uh, layering we're going to just build up some strength along the edges where the flesh meets the scales so we want to go for a bit of a gradient on these spaces again we just want to quickly work our way through for everybody else out there uh, I would recommend leaving the shields off as it allows you a bit more access to get into some of these little trickier spots but otherwise uh, you can paint these models up completely assembled usually when you are trying to you know spend some time and you know go for a really pretty kind of look you usually leave the model in what is normally known as sub assemblies and you know that's fine and of course you can fully assemble the model it just makes it things a little bit trickier and you got to be a little bit more careful as you work your way around surfaces you can see i'm concentrating more color towards endpoints and drawing the color up towards the center of the uh body as it were on each side Again, where it gets closest to the, uh, the scales as they kind of blend between scales and flesh, that's what we're doing. We're building up deeper color. Again, with this layering, I probably could have foregone the uh, second layering and just started beginning the highlighting, but I did want to create that nice deeper color gradient into these surfaces so that it looks a little bit deeper, a little bit more rich, and a little bit more visually interesting. We're going to jump over to Palette Witch Flesh. We're going to use some Volpus Pink and we're going to mix these roughly a two to one, maybe even three to one. All we're looking for is a little bit of the Volpus Pink to uh, tint the uh, Pallid Witch Flesh, bring it down. In fact, I probably could have added a little bit more Pallid Witch Flesh for this initial highlight color because again, this was pretty close to the established color that uh, the thinned out uh, contrast paint had created. And as you can see, so it really allowed me an opportunity to uh, clean up some of these areas and reestablish some of the muscle tone and everything like that. Again, it kind of an unnecessary step. Uh, you know, sometimes when you are f uh, playing around with uh, color scheme and again, I was kind of making this up. This color scheme is inspired by my son who had the idea for this. And so I said, you know what, I'll give it a try because I don't think I've ever seen a source where you're painted in such a fashion. And, uh, you know, sound like good fun for this color scheme. So you guys can thank my son for this uh, color scheme here and having a bit of fun as we work our way through the model. Again, we're just reestablishing a lot of these uh, central values in the uh, feet, the 
belly and chest and the inside of the arm. So we're again, I wanted that gradient to build out darker out towards the uh, outside of limbs and everything like that and get deeper towards where the scales are and brighter and towards the center. So uh, they're going to get brighter at towards the hands and the feet and the center of the chest and the rest of the tail and everything like that. Probably also under the chin as well. We're going to switch over to some pallid witch flesh with some Lamian medium. Of course, always make sure you give your contrast paints and Citadel paints and mediums uh, a good shaking as uh, the uh, sediment and everything like that can build up. And of course, it's been a while since I picked up my paintbrush. So, uh, you know, there was plenty of separation of the uh, pigment and uh, medium when I picked up these bottles. Again, just, you know, learn from my my errors and everything like that. As you can see, we are simply reestablishing highlights. Now on the scales in the chest, and as I work my way down the tail, I actually go with this uh, kind of parallel brush stroke, parallel to the base, or what would be the horizon, as it were, you know, the ground level. So I'm kind of going in this left to right type of motion. And this is simply just to slowly build up the layers. And also as we work our way through, it also creates the impression of a texture. And you can see like uh, where you get down to the groin and the legs, I created that kind of look where you see like this sort of, it almost looks like the hint of scales and everything like that. And that's kind of what I was looking for. Also on the arm, the bicep and the uh, forearm, you can see we also um, did a little bit of, uh, you know, cross hatching as it were. Sigvold Burgundy, contrast medium. Again, we're gonna probably go for about a 50-50 mixture of this. I'll pull, lay down like, I think two drops, one drop, and then I'll throw uh, two drops of medium in. So it's a little bit more medium than it is a uh, contrast paint. And this one here, I was reestablishing some of the saturation. I also grabbed some heavy amount of water and I thin that out really, really, really thin with the water. And you can see here how it's just kind of floating around fallen into recess and everything. And then of course, quickly I clean the brush and draw the excess out and just feather it up uh, towards where we're building up towards the deeper color. And again, uh, is this step entirely necessary? Not really. I was just making more color depth and of course making more work for myself really. But again, it was uh, really, really uh, interesting. I was kind of really having a lot of fun doing this uh, for the uh, underside of this Saurus Warrior. And again, I wanted to have a bit of life and some color variation. And again, this is really, really quick. This is something that uh, many of you out there who have, you know, barely picked up a paintbrush, uh, you can you can do. It's really, really straightforward. And Citadel contrast paints are a really great way to create color depth, saturation, and color blends as well, because of the nature of the paint itself, it is a transparent color as it sits on top of the surface. So it will change the value of a color underneath but it can give you some really great gradients. There you can see some of the little boo-boos I was making and just really fast, you can quickly uh, rinse a brush off, use it really in a damp fashion and feather the color around. And that was the other one I was tempted to do was like a wet blend or just kind of, you know, just kind of work my way around and create this gradient on the surface. But I thought, no, no, we'll do it in a somewhat typical fashion, which people will work with it. So after I've gone around and established the uh, burgundy color, the Sigvault burgundy, Again, it really, really changed the value of, of the flesh and it actually pushed it very far towards the pink side of things. And so I was kind of, eh, I don't know if I really care for that, but we're gonna jump into some gore grunt of fur. We're gonna take a fairly generous amount into our brush and we are gonna begin applying this into the surface of the scales. Now, the reason I went with the gore grunt of fur is it actually has a lot of a red value. As you can see on the top where it's like the lightest of the color, you can see uh, it has a quite a, a bit of a red value. Uh, it's a bit warmer and I wanted that to play nicely with the, uh, the burgundy and the, um, magenta values on the flesh. You see here as a, a little bit of pooling going on, you just simply, uh, wipe your brush off, rinse it off, and then you can just simply move it around and, uh, draw that excess color off that surface. Just so you don't have too much pooling. Cause again, we weren't really looking for it to, um, cover this all in one go. I was merely looking for it just to simply establish the scales. Now, as I was laying this down, and of course it is thinned out just a little bit, but as we're laying it down, uh, there is a break in the gradient. You can see like there's a little line there where the color stops being gorgrunta fur and becomes that magenta value. We're gonna fix that in just a moment, but you can see there the scales, everything looks pretty darn cool. And I'm so far, I'm getting into it. We're gonna take gorgrunta fur, some contrast medium. We're gonna use fairly generous amount of medium here. I think about three, four drops. 
quite a bit. And I'm going to use one drop of uh, Gorgrunt of Fur, mix that into the contrast. And this is going to how, uh, this is how we're going to basically create a bit of a gradient between that Gorgrunt of Fur and the magenta values. And all I do is I take that and just put it right at the boundary uh, between the Gorgrunt of Fur and the magenta values. And that's it. And it's just very lightly. Because we're working in somewhat of a glazing technique, I always move the brush towards where I want the color to build deepest, darkest, most saturated. Again, this is the intention is to make it, um, the gradients build towards where the uh, scales meet the flesh. So it's gonna get darker and darker out towards those edges like that. Next, we're gonna come in with some Saigor Brown from Citadel Contrast. So I'm gonna use uh, a different brush, uh, more of a detail brush. And with the Saigor Brown, we are simply going to draw it out towards the edges of the crest on his head, as well as the scales before they meet the flesh. Now, really quickly here, you see I lay a heavy amount of the uh, pigment down, and then really quickly I rinse my brush off, leaving it somewhat damp, and then begin feathering out the color to help create a gradient on the scales. Yes, that's what we're doing here. So along the edge, like down the neck, and then really quickly I rinse the brush off while it's still somewhat damp, and then begin to move the color around. Now you kind of have to be fast to get accomplish this, but once you start to get used to uh, working in this fashion, you can create these really fast color blends by just simply feathering out the color really, really quickly. It's really, really easy. It's a quick, easy way to create something that looks like you spent a lot of time on, and you know you'll fool your friends and colleagues and your other opponents and players and everything like that, and they'll say, "Wow, you." you did all these colors really, really well. And there's look at these color blends and you can laugh to yourself saying, ha ha, it was really, really fast. All these was a damp brush to feather out the color. Again, these techniques are really, really simple. There's re painting miniatures is not a complex thing. Again, here you see Saigor Brown. Now I'm pushing the color towards, uh, towards the center upper thigh area and allowing the gradient to build towards the flesh. So on the extremities, I make the color uh, in the center deeper and push it out towards the edges but on the body itself i push it out towards the outer edges of the scales where they meet the flesh so kind of i change directions as far as like how i'm running with this color scheme but it just would have looked weird if i did like an edging around the scales like on the thigh and the arm that would have just looked weird versus here you can see i'm building towards uh just that one end and then we're going to quickly feather it and i'm showing this in real time just to show you how easy it is you just got to be fast so you've seen how i laid that color down Rinse the brush off real fast, off camera, of course, and then just draw the color around. And you can bring the color and, you know, move it about and fill in other areas. And it allows you to work with the color in a really, really fun fashion. Tyrant Skull from Citadel Dry. We're going to use a small, or no, this is a medium dry brush. And then really quickly, I just grab a little bit onto my brush. You can see here, I use a old t-shirt as my wiping rag and we draw a lot of the color off. And initially I started in a one direction type of uh, brush stroke along the surface to catch edges. And then I decided, ah, no, we're just gonna hit the entirety of the surface. And so I build up towards the center of the head and the back of the scales. And it, this was mostly concentrated on the scales itself. I did not apply any color really to the flesh areas, although you know using Tyrant Skull wouldn't have hurt anything. So again, that's why I went with this color because even if it, I did uh, apply it haphazardly, cleaning it up, or even, uh, you know, incorporating it into the rest of the paint job is not going to be difficult. And you can see here, we're just really bringing out those edges on the scales. But again, it, it really kind of knocked out a lot of the saturation and I wasn't happy with that. And so I said, you know what? We're going to come back in with some gore grunt of fur right above now. Okay, now. <laughs> Gore Grunt of Fur is next. I'm going to use some contrast medium. This is going to be a fairly uh, heavy contrast um, mixture. Again, three drops of contrast medium, one drop of Gore Grunt of Fur. Give that a thorough mixing. And then with this, we're going to resaturate the centers of the uh, scale details. And then it even gets applied to the uh, spikes on the spine and the head. Uh, don't worry if you hit uh, any of the areas that you have uh, established as the Saigor Brown, because we're going to come back for that in a moment. Again, you can see now we're really bringing back color back, but we also keep all that highlight detail that we did as well with the dry brush. And this is really, again, where contrast really helps as it is a transparency and allows those things from underneath to show through. And again, 
it gives that impression that you've spent a lot of time on a miniature and in fact you can giggle to yourself saying Haha, uh, no I didn't because I'm just having fun painting and I'm just trying out different things we're coming back in with the Cygore Brown we're gonna use some medium uh, I believe we're gonna do the same thing here three drops and one drop of Cygore so you can see there's three drops one drop of Cygore into the brush give it a thorough mixing and once we're happy with that we're gonna reestablish the edges of the scale details again knocking some of that color down but you can see with this even with the cygore brown how nice and dark it is and if you, you layer that right up like two layers of cygore brown you pretty much have a black color and i didn't really want to go with black because again it would have just been too strong whereas the really really dark brown uh creates a really great uh separation from especially from the uh, weapons and the armor and everything like that so Again, it's all about creating contrast, creating separation on models. And as you become more proficient in your painting, you will begin to uh, see these miniatures in that fashion as well, how much contrast you can lay down. Contrast being, you know, uh, light and dark on the model as opposed to the actual paint itself. I know it gets a little confusing, especially for some of you newer painters out there. You know, when I'm talking contrast, am I talking about the paint or am I talking about, uh, you know, the visibility of uh, the composition of the model and everything like that. But that's it. Stay tuned for uh, part two, where we'll work on the armor. Big thank you to my patrons. Without their support, these videos would not be possible. If you're considering Patreon support, click the link in the description below. And a huge thank you to everybody who does that. Take care of your brushes, they'll take care of you, and I will see you in the next painting tutorial.